Hey, there we are. Good morning, beloved. <laughs> Thank you for <coughs> joining us this morning, Sunday Fellowship. We are, as I said in my email last night, we are on the last Sunday in July of 2019. Man, where has this time gone? Where's this time gone, Catherine? Jim, can you tell us where, where his time going? I know Jim, where he can tell where his time going. It's in the hair he's lost this past six months. He's just dropping more. So is his brother, Jimmy. <laughs> we are glad to have you guys join us this morning, Sunday Fellowship. I guess you got the email. I sent out a little early yesterday. Whoa, Jim. <clears throat> Did you see me go move, move from the spirit into the flesh right quick? Did you see that? Did you guys see that move? <laughs> the last couple of weeks we have been uh, discussing uh, what is man's greatest need and of course as we discussed the last two weeks man's greatest need is what spiritual identity spiritual identity and we talked about uh, last week we, we touched on the, the aspects of adoption and when we touched on adoption we talked about it. Every time the word adoption is used, uh, legal adoption comes to our mind because that's what we are familiar with. And so we talked about Paul's statement in Romans 8 uh, about the word adoption that most use that idea for a legal act that God adopts human beings. And so uh, we talked about that. Paul spoke from the revelation of the mystery uh, of what the father, what Jesus gave him and who uh, a human being is in Christ and how God put Christ in him and they became a new creation. Well, the word adoption also means sonship. And what we have been learning in the last couple of years is the mystery of sonship and how that works. And so we are not, uh, we are not uh, in the trap or the bonds of taking on the idea <clears throat> that our answer to our identity is found in adoption and there's there's still some <clears throat> that still gra <laughs> many believers still even if they heard this message some of you might have heard this message and you still grapple with the idea that somehow God adopts you but I <clears throat> but I can tell you this before you and before our father in love there's no identity other than spiritual birth identity that comes from God. In other words, we cannot be related to God except by birth, spiritual birth. Right, Curtis? Spiritual birth. And no matter what religion says, no matter what Satan says about adoption, you cannot make that, well, you can make that word work for you. Religion does it all the time. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is one of the steps out of the two-person gospel is, and Curtis is going to dis discuss this in the next two weeks, and I don't want to I don't want to take all the glory. I don't want to let the air out of any of his tires. <laughs> but he's going to talk about cognitive dissonance, spiritual cognitive dissonance. And I'm going to get in that today, but I'm not going to use the term again. I'm going to try not to use it again because I don't want to deflate his tires. He, he's got this thing the Father gave him, and so I don't want to take the air out of his tires. But <laughs> we're going to, that if you don't understand the birthing, that everything in the seed constitutes what project or, 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 or pre, uh, uh, implanted the seed, the father implanting the seed, there is no connection. An adoption will not cover that. The adoption, adoption has nothing to do with that. So you can't, you can't make adoption work spiritually. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. But because <clears throat> it doesn't work, it lends us to the idea that there is a connection between us and God, a God and Jesus, that gives us some kind of relationship that will work. That will work. So, it kind of leads me into the message for today. If you got the email, the message for today is, what ties, up, what ties you, holds you. Now, I changed that. I didn't change it in the, in the email, I don't think. But what ties you, binds you. What ties you, binds you. Had a good talk yesterday with my dear sister, uh, Jenny. She and I, when, when, when we meet over at Jake's house and we discussing certain things, and I always bounce these things off her on Saturday morning. I get it from Catherine during the week. So I have a, I have a pretty good input from, 
from, from, the, from the sister in. They're not broken either. Broken sister in. <laughs> I guess you guys didn't get that, did you? you, you <laughs> yes, so yeah. So I want to take a look at <clears throat> something that uh, we talked about. Jim and I and, and, and Curtis a few weeks ago was having lunch together and brought this term about uh, the birthing, biological birthing, and the umbilical cord. And that really stuck. I mean, it, it, it really stuck. Now, I'm going to go through a lot of details this morning for you. Uh, some of it's some of it's technical. And as I got into this, I, some of this I knew, but as I studied it again, I came across some things I did not know from the past in my medical background that I hadn't learned. I've done a lot of cesarean sections in my lifetime, and uh, I'm used to cutting the cord, clamping and cutting the cord. It's, just, it's great. But there's some things I didn't understand back then. It's, you can all, as, as Curtis told uh, the guys in, um, we talked about this last Sunday in the Walk on the Pier, there's a difference between knowledge and understanding. I had a lot of knowledge and understanding of what I was doing while I was there. But there's some things I've read now that have changed since I got out of the operating room, since I've got out of that uh, uh, profession. So I will read since my wife has chosen. You going to read for me, baby? Yeah, please read. <coughs> Ecclesiastes 4.12 and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. In biological birth, it is more than just getting the baby out of the uterus or womb. The baby is not free yet to be its own person. It is still tied to three things, the mother, the placenta, and the umbilical cord. Three cords. Three unbreak. Okay. These three both tie and bind the baby from being completely free and, in, and an independent person. As we take a deeper look at the physical and biological process that ties and binds baby, mom, placenta, and umbilical cord, we will also preview the spiritual parallels of the new creation son of God as well. Can a baby breathe with the umbilical cord attached? While the umbilical cord is attached to the baby, he or she still receives oxygen which helps to explain how water birth babies can breathe under, while under water. It's not until they hit the air that the breathing reflex is stimulated. The newborn baby now has, its, has to use its lungs to breathe. This is uncomfortable, lotus birth. The mm -hmm. baby begins learning its new life. When the placenta is birthed shortly after the baby, it ends the baby's connection. This is separation from mother's womb, her flesh. Okay, let's discuss that. Some of this I really didn't know uh, in, before now uh, as I was studying for this. I read some of these parts I didn't know that. You, you probably, you, you've been a nurse for a long time. You've been a doctor for a while, but you, I mean, you're in a different area of medicine, but you, you probably done some L&D work in your life, haven't you? Mm -hmm. in the ER. Did you know some of this? In the ER too? Some, some of this I didn't know. For instance, I didn't know I knew what the umbilical cord did. I knew what the umbilical cord did. I knew it took nutrients and blood, oxidated blood to the baby in the womb. But I didn't know when you delivered it, the baby delivered, uh, and it didn't make, it didn't, I didn't realize this, but when you're inside, you're in, in, when you're in the amniotic fluid, you're underwater. <laughs> They're underwater now for a long time. And I didn't realize that. So when they deliver them and when they come out in, 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 water, in water birth, they can still breathe. Even when they take that, what, what, what Catherine just read, that reflex hits the face, the, 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 the stimulates them to breathe, but they're still receiving oxygen by the umbilical cord. So they're breathing in their lungs, but they're still receiving oxygenated blood because the placenta is still attached to the uterine wall. Now, this is important. I'm saying all of this to set this up. You need to, you need to let that soak into your thinking. Men, brethren, let that soak into your thinking. The sister and already know this, at least most of them do, they already have kids. But because the placenta is attached to the uterine wall, Every, all of the blood from the mother is flowing through the umbilical cord to the baby providing oxygenated blood, which means they're still breathing from the air, but they still have oxygenated blood coming in. <clears throat> 
that all stops when the cord is cut. But we'll get to that in a second because there's some things, some parallels I want you guys to see about biological birth and spiritual birth. Let me say one other thing I should have said in my opening. There's a lot of examples that are used that break down when you're trying to cross over into spiritual understanding, when you're trying to cross into spiritual knowledge. There's some examples that break down. There's only a few that I know that do not break down as much as others. One of them is biological birth compared to spiritual birth. There's a lot of the father put a lot into that. He gave us a lot when he gave us the understanding of biological birth, biological conception, spiritual birth, spiritual conception. He gave us a lot. In it. It, that doesn't break down as something like, like, for instance, like the word adoption. Adoption breaks down. It does not carry over spiritually because it's not supposed to. It, the idea is not supposed to cross over into something spiritual. It doesn't. And you can try to make that work. Those of you still locked in the two-person gospel, you will try to make that work. <laughs> you try to make it work. You try to say, I'm, I'm born of God. I'm born again. But, 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 but God adopted me. No. If he did, then you have nothing. He has nothing in you, as the Bible said. He has nothing in you. Adoption. No matter what rights a child, adopted child, get back in the ancient days, no matter what rights came with that adoption, he had nothing in them. That adopted father had nothing, they had no DNA that flows through that child's veins, no blood, nothing for true identity. Okay? But anyway, so. The umbilical cord, the uterus, I mean, the umbilical cord, the placenta, and the uterus is the subject of where we're going in this right now. Now, uh, uh, Catherine just read that first part. I just, go, we go over the second part there for just uh, the placenta, the umbilical placenta. cord. Mother's blood gives fetus nutrients and oxygen, umbilical cord, lifeline that attaches placenta to fetus, and amniotic so sac, fetus home fluid, protecting from outside knocks, bumps, and other external pressures. How long should placenta and umbilical cord stay attached? There's a new trend in the world of natural birthing methods. Some mothers are opting for lotus births, where the umbilical cord is not cut immediately after birth. Okay, before we get into that, now I didn't know about this lotus birth thing. I had never heard of lotus birth, I, not in the term of lotus birth, but I have heard about the idea a baby's not, the cord not being cut right away. But lotus birth is another whole, whole genre of childbirth that I had not known about. And so we're going to talk about lotus birth in detail because lotus birth really has something to do with the new believer. It has something to do with the new believer. We'll get to that in a second. So uh, what I want to emphasize here. And, 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 and we'll get to that in, in, in a minute, but I want to, in, in the spiritual birth, but I want to emphasize something about, about the, the, the threefold cord, the umbilical cord, the, the, the placenta, and the uterus. When a child is born, the, uh, uh, the placenta is attached to the uterine wall. After a certain period of time, I don't, remember, I don't remember the time, I don't know if you remember the time, it's called the placenta is delivered. It, it's called the afterbirth. It detaches, right. And as long as the placenta is detached, the mother is attached. Everything she has in her is flowing through the placenta to the baby. Matter of fact, the oxygen that the baby is breathing through the cord is coming from the mother's blood. But the minute that thing detaches, the minute it comes detached from the uterine wall, her connection with him is broken. And there's something else at that time that's going on. Also, and we'll get to that down here in a minute. That's, that's true. Uh, uh, you, sister, sister, you want to come up here? If you want to come up here, you just you can come on up here. She, she just, she just, she's about to give me 30 years of nursing right now. That's right. That's one of the things we will discuss. The mother's bleeding after the baby's delivery. You, want, you, you can come up here and join me if you want, sister. You can come up here and join me. So, so but... There's a thing called cord, the umbilical cord pulsation. And as long as the cord 
is pulsing when after delivery, the cord will, the umbilical cord pulsates. And what it means is you still have a connection of flow between the mother and the baby. There's a flow. And it, it, it'll pulsate sometimes up to a minute to two minutes. It depends on the conditions. Some pulsate a little longer than others. But whenever the pulsation stops, whenever the pulsation stops, that mother is not transferring anything to the baby. Now, the, the blood in the cord is still oxygenated. But as time goes on, that deteriorates. Right, Jenny? Okay. I just want to make I got she's got 30 years of nursing. She's over there look, looking at me like, you better get this right. <laughs> So anyway, once the cord starts pulsating, pulsating, most doctors at this time clamp and cut the cord. And then there's, there's, a, there's another process going on. But we'll get to some of this in a second because it's, it's important about the, this idea of the cord. And the, now, one of the other things I would like you to, to know, men, dads, is that <clears throat> the placenta, the very thing that ties the mother to the baby, the very thing that provides life to this child, this fetus, dads have nothing to do with the placenta. It's her blood. It's her tissue. Dads, men have nothing to do with the placenta. In other words, the placenta is, the, is, the, is, is one of the sources that gives the baby life. Now, dads have everything to do with the sex of the child, male, female. Dads have everything to do with it. X, Y, his chromosomes and mom's chromosomes, X, X. Whatever is in the womb, the zygote, remember we talked about the zygote, rolls down the, rolls down the uterine wall, goes into the, the uterus, rolls down the fallopian tubes, goes down and attaches to the uterine wall. That blood and tissue that we talked about last year, that's already there, that comes from the mother, and that becomes the placenta, right? Right now, she is binding with that child. She becomes tied to that child in that placenta and cord. That's her flesh. That kind of brings to mind what Jesus said. Remember, I mean, not what, Jesus, what Paul said. Remember what Paul said about that? Born of a woman, made under the law. Born of a, not yes, born of a woman does mean physical delivery. But that means that the placenta, the placenta that held Jesus in the womb had nothing to do with a biological father. It was all the mother. The placenta is all the mother. It's her flesh. It's her blood. Now think about that when we get to the spiritual side. <laughs> think about that for a second. So, Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about uh, the lotus birth and what that is. Please, Catherine. Thank you. What is lotus birth? Lotus birth, also known as umbilical non-severance. Non which means you don't cut the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. Umbilical non-severance is the practice of leaving the baby attached to the placenta until the cord naturally dries and disconnects from the belly button. Now, pause. It says naturally dries. What's another word for naturally dries? Curtis, you know what? Shrivel up. Shrivel up, okay. Dehydrate. Dehydrate. How about this? Naturally dies. It goes into a natural death. Keep baby attached until a, a placenta and umbilical cord dry out. This process generally takes three to ten days but can vary depending on climate and humidity levels. Lotus birth is about keeping the umbilical cord and placenta with the baby until he or she gently transitions to life outside the womb. It is a quiet and respectful transfer of attachment without the trauma of being cut from the mother. Benefits of lotus birth. For many, lotus birth is a mostly spiritual practice that honors the birthing process and the sacred relationship the baby has with the umbilical cord and placenta. That said, some possible benefits could include more blood, like delayed cord clamping. Umbilical non-severance uh, non doesn't disrupt blood volume and allows the oxygenated blood to flow back into the baby. Because the, the blood that's in the cord is actually the baby's blood. It is not the mother's blood. It is the mother's blood. It is not the mother's blood. Or is it a combination of them? Well, it's a combination. Otherwise, everybody would have the same blood type. 
That's true. I'm trying to think of the physics There's of it. There's an RH factor. Oh, 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 anyway, we'll get back on number two. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back on right. Thank number you. Two, number two. <laughs> number two, advantage of this per- particular practice. No open wound means less infection risk. In her book, Brought to Bed, Childbearing in America, 1750-1950, Dr. Judith Le- uh, Levitt explains that American pioneer babies were often left connected to their placenta to lessen risk of infection and boost child mortality. Now, let's pause with boost that. Boost child's... Go ahead. Decrease child mortality rates, technically, okay. is what that should say. But now, one of the things Jenny and I talked teach. about yesterday, and it kind of says it in here, when did the idea of cutting the cord when the baby came out start? Nobody really knows that. I don't think anybody really knows that. But Nick because of this scissors. lady, from 1750 to 1950, babies were born and the cord was not cut right away. The cords were not cut right away. The attachment that made this child attached to that mother was not, recorded, uh, was not cut right away. Okay, go ahead, please. Um. Foster healing of the umbilicus. Midwife consult and lotus birth educator said that lotus birth babies' belly buttons are perfect. By perfect, I mean a completely healed navel skin area. Belly button shapes vary. Uh, Emotional well-being. They believe lotus birth reduces birth trauma and reinforces the gentleness of natural birth. Uh, Number five is postpartum healing. Both mother and child benefit from respecting the healing process. There is no such bouncing back with a placenta in tow. Mm. You know what they mean by that. If you're going to wait three to ten days before, you, uh, you, before the baby is disconnected, it means you don't go a lot of places carrying a placenta and a baby with you. That's so true. You can't slap them in the car seat. Yeah, you go. can't strap them in the car seat, <laughs> put the placenta in there, and, and then head out to, the, to Walmart. You know what I mean? That's kind of tough. That's kind of a tough thing to do. How do you go in there? You're rolling down the aisle, going into the meat section. They, 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 they stop you for shoplifting steak or something. It is. It's red. It'll still work, baby. It'll still work. Okay. Uh, there are a few risks with, with this lotus childbirth. I'll read those. Uh... Uh, Jim is helping out Catherine with the batteries. I'll read the, the risk. Infection. That is the number one. Uh, Jenny, am I correct on this now? That's the number one risk when you leave the placenta in the mother after childbirth. After childbirth. Uh, is, is, the, is the risk of infection. As, as, a, as, as a decaying human organ f- uh, filled with <clears throat> human blood there is a bacterial overgrowth risk if not properly cared for. Right. Yeah. Right. It, it, you mean the blood? Uh, I you were about yeah, well, yeah, the placenta. But there's two deals with, with infection. One, in the uterus, mm-hmm. from the disconnection and the bleeding. Mm-hmm. Two, once the, once the, uh, the placenta is out, and it is not protected, you still get the risk of infection, only because the idea is you have human blood, and human blood has, has bacteria and things with it, and so you can, it can cause a, a, a traumatic event with the baby. Uh, you can have your placenta and eat it too. <laughs> it happens. It, it happens. Does. While not necessarily a risk, it does stop women from choosing lotus birth. If you plan to consume or, or encapsulate your placenta, a lotus birth is not for you. Curtis has got, guys, you can't see it, but Curtis is sitting back there with his hands over his ears. He did not want to hear that. He did not want to hear that. Inconvenience. You really should, you really should not be going anywhere with an infant and his or her placenta. It's not very fashionable or practical. Accessories plus travel can increase the risk of infection. Okay? All right, let's look at the next part here, babe. Most medical organizations do not support lotus birth, and a 2008 statement from the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists said, the placenta is particularly prone to infection as it contains blood. At the post-delivery stage, it has no circulation and is essentially dead tissue. 
Um, now, let's look at that one more time. It says once the placenta has been delivered, there is no more circulation. Right, Jenny? Right, Catherine? There's no more circulation. And it is essentially dead tissue. Keep that in mind. Once there's a disconnect, it automatically begins to die. There is no, without the life of the blood, the life of the flesh what? Is in the blood. Is in the blood. And there's no blood circulating from the mother to that placenta that, that kept them and made them one. So that cord that kept, them bi- that kept them bound as one and the mother giving life through her blood to the child, that's no longer there. So we're looking at something that is dying. You attach to something that's dying. I know you know where this is going spiritually. I know you're going to know where this is going spiritually. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, during delayed cord clamping, the birth provider simply waits a few minutes for the cord to stop pulsating before clamping and cutting. This allows the placental transfusion of blood into the baby. Conflicting opinions. Kind of like having different translations and interpretations. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, there's three different organizations here. I, when I was writing this yesterday, what came to me, there's three different organizations, all accredited organizations, accrediting organization. But all three of them had three different, three different interpretations uh, of, of, of their data toward Lotus birth. And it reminded me of having three different translations of the Bible. <laughs> well, one translation says this, one translation, and everybody wants to get the one that says the perfect. It wants to be perfect. So let's read these three, three translations on Lotus birth. American College of <laughs> Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends a delay in umbilical cord clamping in full-term and preterm infants for at least 30 to 60 seconds after birth. Uh, the World Health Organization says late cord clamping three to one to three minutes after birth for all births while initiating simultaneous essential newborn care. And the American College of Midwives recommends at least two to five minutes. The father, shall I continue? Yeah. I just want to say about that picture, if you got the picture up there, I can tell you straight up, uh, I don't know what you call those cavemen, caveman day women, but they would look at this and they would have chewed that cord off and had that baby free of it. I'm here to tell you. you they wouldn't have put up with that. No, it didn't start in 1750. There's no woman that allowed that thing to stay attached to their baby. I can tell you that I don't, right now. I don't think so. I, think, I don't think cord cutting came out until sometime later. Now women chewed that thing off. They, once there was scissors, that thing was gone. I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure that, that this was the... This was the this was the be- this was from the beginning. Where the placenta. This has a meaning. It looks like carry-on luggage to me. It it, it, it <laughs> looks like carry-on luggage. <laughs> it, 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 it has a, it has a definite meaning, because you're tied to you're tied to the mother, flesh. That to you, the baby is dying. To the baby, what they've been having drawing life from is dying. And the longer you stay connected to it, the greater your risk <coughs> of becoming infected. But we'll get to that in just a second. Keep going. The father has no part of the placenta. This connection of baby cord and placenta is flesh of the mother. As long as this connection is maintained, it uh, is maintained it attached to something that was once filled, uh, filled life and now Full of death. It's once filled with life and now what? Is full of death and dying. This union can bring harm to the newborn. This may be the intent, but death can only bring forth death. Spiritual birth of the Son of God. First Peter 1 23, being born again, not, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Um what scripture is this? I'm a little confused. You got First Peter one twenty three, and then John one. Yeah, John one okay. and, and and one fourteen. John one and one says, "In the beginning was the Word." Okay. <coughs> yes. John one fourteen says, "And the Word was made flesh." Right. The new creation, Son of God, is spiritually birthed, and as the biological Son is birthed and enters the world, 
tied to its mother and her flesh with a cord which binds them together, so is spiritual son of God tied to the similar types of binding of the world. The new creation spiritual son begins here. The process of sonship begins upon spiritual birth. We still have pulls or ties to our flesh. We begin learning who we are as another person to the Father through the process of spiritual sonship. Religion seems to practice lotus birth on those who become spiritually birthed sons of God. This man-made religion, this is man-made religion in all its glory. They say the new creation son, a um, few words in there, David, you want to take it? Yeah, I'll take it. <coughs> it, it we didn't proofread this, I see. <laughs> the new creation son is tied to their doctrine and teaching of the two-person gospel of Jesus plus them. The new, the, the new creation son <clears throat> is tied to their man-made religions, doctrine and teaching of the two-person gospel of Jesus plus them. Secondly, they tie the new creation son to works, law, and self-improvement of being a better or moral person based on their theology because that changes from denomination or institution to denomination, right? Whatever that means in that group, moral person for one group is uh, 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 one thing, and you go, to, for instance, to a Baptist is one thing, to a Catholic is something else. So morality is, is on a moving scale. What you can do in the Catholic church, you can't do in the Baptist church. What you do in the Baptist church, you can't do in the Catholic church or Pentecostal church. Number three, they cannot transfer spiritual they cannot transfer the spiritual life of Christ, but they proclaim spiritual growth is found and seen in behavior modification and believing the right things. Pete, you've been in that group that, that you had to believe the right things. And I'd probably, Jimmy, I know you have, and probably Steve and you too, Lopez, Monica. Being in a group that tells you this is the right things. You've been, you have to believe the right things. So, so in other words, man-made religion can't transfer a spiritual life of Christ but they proclaim spiritual growth. How do they proclaim spiritual growth? They look at behavior modification. Paul said they circumcise you that they might glory in your flesh. The next, they seek to conform the box, uh, the box soul identity into uh, what they say, what they see is as pleasing to God. They seek to conform each of you to the box life identity and to that which they see is pleasing to God. And the last one here says they re, they remind the new creation son of God how unworthy they are to receive God's grace and must seek God's love, grace and forgiveness. How often? Daily. There's always somebody that says daily we need to we need to be before God. We need to we need to seek God for our sins and we need to repent repent jenny every day you need to repent curtis this is an outworking and cornerstone of their two-person gospel the answer to lotus birth practice of man-made religion is the process of sonship in sonship we are separated from the cord that ties and binds us to our old man of body soul identity. Before we look at the diagram, at the diagram, which we will go to in the board here in just a second, we need to know that we need to know the foundation of our true identity is spiritual birth. We haven't said that enough. We can't say that enough. We must understand that the <laughs> the foundation of who we are spiritually is in the birthing. We can't say that enough. It's in the birthing because in the birthing is where we had union. We moved into oneness and therefore we have what? Identity. Just like a biological child is conceived and born. Union, oneness, identity. Spiritual birth is the foundation for sonship. Union, oneness, and identity. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, uh, and I should say spiritual union, oneness, 
and spiritual identity, which ultimately satisfies man's deepest need. So it is in spiritual birth we receive our new spiritual identity as another person. That's something else. We, 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 uh, I've said that to you for several years now, and I want to emphasize that again. Spiritual birth makes you another person. God putting Christ in you makes you another person. I've not heard, and I think Curtis and I talked about this recently. I don't hear too many people talking about Christ being in them and they're becoming another person. It's always, and, and uh, he'll cover some of this in the, in, in the weeks to come. But I always hear about Christ living in you. Christ living in you. Christ living in you. But what does that do for you? What does that do for him? What does that do for Christ? God put Christ in you. Well, you, you live Christ. So what does that look like? Well, you, you need to yield to him because he's your wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Sounds to me like you're still connected to the cord. There's still a cord. There's still a placenta in that. Yes, lotus birth. You're still carrying around the placenta. It's dying, but you're still acting like it's alive. We can't get that enough. We can't get that enough. We receive our new spiritual identity as another person, the son of God, spiritually. God puts Christ in you, Jenny. You become another person. Who is that other person? If any man be in Christ, he is a what? No. He is a what? Well, yeah, that's the punchline. He is what? <laughs> another person first. Who is this other person is the son of God spiritually. God puts Christ in you. You become a new creation, a new person, another person to him spiritually. So who is that person we become to him? Not to you and your uterus. I mean, your, your placenta. You're still attached. So therefore, it's my placenta and me. <laughs> That's a song. <laughs> me and my placenta. <laughs> we'll get to that in board just, just a second. <laughs> it is a song. Me and my. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. Let's go. For this, for this to be, for this to have meaning and fulfillment in us, the umbilical cord and placenta of the flesh need to be cut soon after we are born again. Religion practices lotus birth. They can't do anything about who we are spiritually, but they can keep us tied to the placenta of the flesh that we came in on. They keep us tied there. That's Jesus plus me. Jesus plus you. Christ plus me. We're carrying around something that's dying. And as long as you're doing that, it doesn't bring life anymore. It doesn't have anything flowing through it. It's just there. And people believe that there's a great wealth of, you get something out of that. The minute you put, God puts Christ in us, that need to be a severance. Sever the cord. The cord needs to be cut. Because if you don't, I'll show you what happens. Let's look at this. Uh, Galatians, okay, Catherine, you can read, you can read the verse for me, please. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the brethren, among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. That's, you know, t when I read that, t t uh, when I put that, I, said, I was telling that to, to Jenny yesterday, but when I read that verse, that Jim, put that verse back up for me, please. I read that verse. You know what stuck with me? There's several parts of this verse that stuck with me. You know what was stuck with me in this? Flesh and blood. I conferred not with, in other words, I was not attached to the uterus anymore. I was not attached to the placenta anymore. Look at that. 
when it pleased God who cut <laughs> my cord and separated me from the what? Bless Life you. flow that I had from my mother's womb, the identity I had. And call me by his grace. Now, many still believe that, like I said, if you don't read Paul from the, from the mystery, you, 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 everybody, most people, if you look at most commentaries, they're saying Paul is saying uh, God knew him before he was born. And when he was living into the world, uh, uh, God called him by his grace. But if that's the case, then the next part of that, that, that verse would not make sense to reveal his son in me. Because when he was born, biologically, he didn't have Christ in him. Did he? No. Mm -hmm. We know that road to Damascus tells us that. To reveal his son in me. So that tells us something about this verse. Paul's not talking about something that happened when he had biological birth. He's talking about something that happened when he was what? Already born again. And God wanted to show him something he didn't know about his identity. His identity as a son. Mm -hmm. And so he had to tell him. Paul saw that when God revealed his son in him. He was separated from the uterus and the placenta that gave him identity and life from his mother's womb. When he did that, he did not confer. He did not talk that over with anybody who had flesh and blood because they would not understand it. Okay, let's, let's go to the board right quick. I only got a couple of things here. Now, I... Uh, Oh, thank you, Jim. I uh, drew this diagram. Oh, look at that. Jimmy, you can read this. I know you can, brother. <laughs> I drew up here the, um, the uh, biological birth. We see here I drew, uh, drew a little box because all babies come in in a box. Baby in a box. <laughs> uh, a baby boy who's a son. What he has is this umbilical cord that ties him to the placenta that ties him to his mother's wound or uterus. Now, in in uh, in uh, in Lotus birth, the when the when there is a separation between the mother's wound or her uterus and the placenta, you keep the placenta intact for a number of days. Now, here it says in Lotus birth, you go three to ten days. That's a long time to walk around. Well, that's a long time to have to be towing something that's dead. Kind of reminds me of the picture you see sometimes when Paul is, 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 is uh, chained to a Roman soldier. That is, a, that is an example of somebody being uh, tied to someone that's dead. That, because in that example, a Roman soldier is not a believer. He's dead. And Paul is alive, so he's attached to somebody, someone that's dead, attached to a flesh that's dead. Here, the baby is attached to something that is dying. The minute that cord is cut, well, they don't cut the cord here. We're not, we, we, uh, I'll get that in a second. The, the minute the placenta is delivered, that placenta is cut off from all the life that it transferred to the baby and the same life that gave the placenta life, which is the mother, the mother's womb, the mother's uterus, this life that was here, is no longer a part of it. And so it starts to die. This starts to die. And there's a lot of things that can happen. But the baby's not receiving anything from it. When we're birthed by God, we don't receive, well, let me, I'll get to this in a second. I don't want to jump. This baby's not receiving anything from that placenta. There's no more blood transferring. Everything in that cord, the blood is drying up. Blood doesn't take 10 days to dry up. That blood is within 24 hours, if not longer, depends on the heat and everything is, the, the environment is in, that blood is already coagulated. Right. Thank you, Jenny. You, you, you can come on up here now. Okay, hemolyzed. <laughs> hemolyzed. That's what the sister said over here. I couldn't say coagulate because coagulation and hemolyzation is almost the same thing. You need to get up here if you want to do, if you want to help. <laughs> so what we have in biological birth, in the lotus birth method, a uterus, uh, I mean a, a placenta and a cord that's attached to a new child that's not productive. Can't give it anything. As a matter of fact, if you're not careful, 
it can take away from the newborn, right? It can take away from it. It can, it can hinder or alter its life by infection. It definitely will have, an, a, 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 it can be a catastrophic effect on this infant. But anyway, this is what we have in biological birth. Now, also, uh, most say when the cord is pulsating, when it's attached, it pulsates, it's still bringing blood and nutrients and, and oxygen to the baby. Even though the baby is still breathing on its own, you're still receiving, it's still receiving life from the mother. But at a specific time, once the cord starts pulsating, they clamp it and cut it. They cut it. This has nothing to do now with the mother or the child anymore. It doesn't bind them. It doesn't tie them. It has nothing to do with it. Now the child is free from all what? Imp impediments. It's free from the cord. It's free from the placenta. And it's free from the mother. There's no three-way tie. There's no cord that binds them together anymore. They're free. He's free to live. He's free to breathe on his own. He doesn't have to worry about getting some kind of infection from something that's dying. So let's move down into the spiritual soil. Can you get, oh, look at Jim. Look at old Jim over there showing off. Okay, spiritual birth. We have the new creation son of God, and we have a, a, a cord. <laughs> We have a, a placenta that we're going to call body, soul, identity. And we're going to have the mother <laughs> or, the, or the wound or the uterus called religion. or church. And I put the word church here. And what I mean by church is the organization, the institution, or denomination. The, the organization, the institution, or denomination, which is Christ plus me, which Curtis so fondly called the two-person gospel. Christ plus me, or Christ plus you, or Jesus plus you. Anyway, when this child is born of God, born again, which we read earlier, religion wants to use lotus birth. Well, I, I gave you the reason why the, 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 the religion wants to use lotus birth. This is why. They take away here they do separate I, I can't tell you religion can't they want you to separate why do they want you to separate why did you why do they want to separate why why, why does this that does a delivery of the body soul identity from the church there who knows why why did they why did why what what what, what give me give me an example of why this is necessary i'll tell you why you, you have any question you, you curtis you know yeah, what, 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 if they, don't, they want you to separate into body, soul, identity, bringing this knowledge into, into body, soul, identity because you can be a witness for them. You can be a witness. You can carry everything here and you can be a witness for that church or for that denomination. How? How do they keep the, the, the um, this is the placenta, but here is body, soul, identity. What ties us, what ties it to the new creation son is what? The law. They've given you the law. And you take that with you wherever you go. You don't pack these people with you, so to speak, because the institution, the organization, the denomination, they've already put this stuff in you. So that, the law keeps you tied to body, soul, identity, which is a reflection of the organization, institution, the denomination that you came from. Ask any good Catholic or any good Baptist, any good Methodist, any good Pentecostal. They might not even go to that church anymore. Watch this. Watch this. Listen to this. Jenny, when you came out of the Baptist church, did you carry any of that stuff with you? Oh, of course. Of course. There wasn't no tie here anymore. Why? What kept, what, what kept all that in her? She had a lot of law in her. And everywhere she went, she measured everything she heard based on what she was given when she was attached to the Baptist church. The two-person gospel. The gospel of 
Christ in me or Jesus in me. Jesus plus me. I want to say plus. I don't say and. I want to say plus. Christ plus me. So when you are, uh, when you, when the, when the, when the, when the, uh, the believer is attached from the mothership, they take that with them. They are, <laughs> you like that, Curtis? Mothership. <laughs> when they just attached from the mothership, they take all that with them. You took it with you. Uh, Sylvia, Curtis, you still packing that luggage. Are you, you're right. Curtis said he had a U-Haul full of it. He still got it parked out the back of the house. You flipped it. It's a process. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It is a process. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do, the best thing is to walk away from it. Mm -hmm. Not to try to fix it. Not to try to get it right, to line it up with, see what you, what you was believe, how bad this was and how good this is, or how good this is and how bad that was. That's all a trap. That keeps you tied to the uterus of, of, of body-soul identity. Because we're trying, huh? Yeah, well, in this case, it's the body, soul, identity, but the placenta, yes. You need to walk away from it. That's why the minute you begin to see Christ, this needs to happen. Clamp. Cut. Walk away from it. Walk away from it. The placenta called body, soul, identity is dead. Everything in it refers back to religion. Everything in it refers back to religion. Everything in the, 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 the placenta, the cord, all refers back to what you were tied to that gave you life and what you thought was life in religion. I think Jimmy grew up in, uh, assem what, yours was Assembly of God, wasn't it, Jimmy? Yes, Assembly of God. Uh, and uh, I think Pete was, uh, I think Pete told me he was, Catholic at one time. Wasn't, wasn't you Catholic at one time, Pete? Maybe not. Maybe not. But anyway, we'll get to that later. But anyway, the minute the Father begins to show you and want to reveal to you who you are, there must be a place where the cord is cut. All the ties are cut. And you don't do that by trying to figure out how good this is, how spiritual this is. None of that, Monica. You don't measure it. You don't figure it out. You walk away from it. The Lopez, you walk away from it. You turn, put the clamp on that, cut it, and leave it alone. It's already dying. The, 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 the placenta and cord are dying. Don't keep religion. Body, soul, identity is dying. It all has down motivation. If we see that up here. It all has down motivation. And as long as you're in down motivation, there's nothing you can get from life from that. It doesn't supply you. It doesn't supply your need. It doesn't even meet your need. So in spiritual birth, the new creation son of God must allow the spirit, must allow the father to cut the cord immediately after they become new creations in Christ. New creation as another person. New creation of the Son of God. And that means, that, now listen to me. If you've been born again 30 years, it doesn't really matter. The cord needs to be clamped and cut. Because what you attach to is dying and it's killing you. It's killing your new identity. You can never come to that because you're still attached to what was. You're still attached to who you used to be. Remember, when, the, when, the, when that child is connected to the placenta, he's, he's connected to what he used to be. To the mother. He, he's not free yet. And so being free, you say, well, he came out of the womb. The baby is not stuffed in the womb anymore. He's free. No, as long as you have something that ties you, you're bound to it. The, you, the, the placenta and the cord binds you to what was. Okay, any questions? There's some verses I have here, but I'm not going to go over them. Uh, uh, I'm not going to discuss them because my time is, is, is short. And I want to keep it at a certain time frame today. And I really don't need to go into a, a second week of this. Besides, 
Our dear brother Curtis is going to come next week and the week after. He got two weeks, he said, of what the father gave him. Uh, I, wa- I really want to talk this. I want to connect this to uh, cognitive dis- dissonance or spiritual cognitive dissonance. Uh, there is a, uh, believe it or not, I, I got some things on this. <laughs> I had a word on this yesterday. I'm waiting for Curtis to finish. Brother already gave, Paul already gave me a word from what this brother going to be talking about in the next couple of weeks. But I want you to understand something about spiritual birth that as long as you tie to who you are in the flesh, body, soul, identity, you're tied to something that binds you to the past. Old things have not passed away. Here, old things have not passed away. They're still connected. So if we want anything new, if we want anything new, we need to cut the cords of man-made religion and begin to learn to live free as a son of God. Now, you might not understand what that means. You, you might not know what that means. You might not understand what that means, but you will not until you're able to, to cut the cord and be free. What ties us to the flesh binds us to the flesh. What ties you to the flesh binds you to the flesh. And that could be your birthday. Anyway, I think that's all. It, it, uh, uh, there was a lot, I guess, that we could have said and done with this, but I'm satisfied with what the Father gave us. I want to, try, I want to encourage you, walk away from your cord and placenta called body, soul, identity, and the law that keeps you tied. Christ plus you, Jesus plus you, is death. It's death. Christ in you, without you becoming another person, is death. Christ in you, without knowing who you are in Christ as the spiritual son of God, is death. Now, I, uh, Curtis gave me a preview of his notes for the next couple of weeks, so I'm trying my best not to go into him because I don't want to let the air out of his tires. But anyway, guys, once again, thank you for joining us this week in Sunday Fellowship. We trust the Father to see you guys next week. I think Brother Curtis is going to bring the message next week. Matter of fact, he's going to do it the next two weeks. Next, and, and after that, we're in Chicago, Pete. Guys, we're in Chicago, and I got all of your emails on getting a uh, getting your Zoom link. We'll take care of that uh, in the next week or so. All right. With that said, we thank you guys for joining us this morning. We see you guys next week, Lord willing, in Sunday Fellowship. Amen.